Puff the Magic Dragon and the Incredible Mr. Nobody. Chapter 2. How to Lose a Duck and Gain a Dragon. I love Paschetti! Terry and Nobody sat by the large kitchen window, eating their lunch and watching the early February snow fall outside. Bright as he was, Terry, like most kids, pronounced spaghetti, Paschetti. Nobody slurped about thirteen feet of it up in one long string, sighed happily, and wiped his bill with his napkin. If I had a middle name, Paschetti would be it. You know what else I love? asked Terry. Weather! I wish I could eat it, like Paschetti. Nobody was delighted with the sudden turn Terry's mind had taken. Slurp down a rainstorm? he giggled. Terry nodded, then got another great idea. What if, instead of raining or snowing, it Paschettied, you know? All red and slippery, it squiggles down from the sky and makes noodle houses, macaroni trees, and flowers and hills. I know what you mean, said nobody, but I don't think anybody else will unless we paint a picture. Great idea, cried Terry. They got out the paint jars and covered a large sheet of drawing paper with wonderfully fanciful tomato-colored landscapes. Unfortunately, the next day at school, Terry's art teacher did not think the idea was so great. Terry, this picture is just silly. You must paint real trees and houses, and not spaghetti. Terry looked away miserably and muttered, It's paschetti. Real trees, real houses, continued the art teacher, and make sure nobody helps you. I'll make sure, all right. I'll make real sure, said Terry under his breath. From here on, I'll just tell them nobody did it. Then I won't get blamed. And so, Terry began to hide all his talents behind nobody. Any time he had a thought which was bright, meaningful, or offbeat, he'd pretend it came from his best friend. And pretty soon, Terry began to believe that he had started out to pretend. He really thought all his talents originated with Mr. Nobody. Then came that awful day with a terrible-tempered Professor Katzendorfer. You see, Terry's school principal was so impressed with his piano playing that she recommended Terry to old Katzendorfer, one of the world's most famous music teachers. The imposing busts of Beethoven, Mozart, and Bach looked down from the mantel on the musty music studio. As the angry-spirited old professor sputtered at Terry, who sat cringing at the piano. The whole lesson had started off wrong. To audition, Terry had played an original composition. Impressed, Kassendorfer asked, Who wrote it? Terry, of course, answered, Nobody. The professor, of course, became totally confused. Then, when Terry explained that nobody was a duck and invisible, old Katzendorfer became furious. He thought Terry was trying to make a fool of him. Terry's mom and dad tried to explain, but he would have none of it. The angry professor threw up his hands and dismissed them curtly. Take him home and don't bring him back until he wishes to be serious. Driving back in the car, Terry's mom and dad realized something had to be done. And so, that night at the dinner table, Terry's dad had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his son. Son, you know we love you very much, he said. I know that, Dad, said Terry. He gestured toward the empty chair next to him. Both of us do. Terry's dad gulped and began. He attempted to explain to his son that nobody was just an imaginary friend. He spoke with infinite kindness, picking and choosing his words with care. But the more he spoke, the more confused Terry became. Suddenly, Terry looked to the chair next to him. It was empty. Nobody was gone. He looked back to his mom and dad and cried out, What did you do to him? You made him run away! He ran upstairs, his small chest heaving with sobs, and threw himself on his bed. That night, for the first time in more than a year, Terry was alone in his room. Imaginary friend or not, Terry was nobody without nobody. He lost interest. His marks dropped off in school. Who 
who would laugh at his squishy jokes now? And then one night, after his mother had tucked him into bed and closed the door, Terry got up, took the sheets off his bed, tied them into a long rope, and dropped one end out the window. He tied the other end to the bed, and then slowly dressed himself, and finally climbed out. Terry, determined to find his best friend, was running away. But since his friend wasn't there to help him tie the sheets correctly, the knots became undone, and Terry began to fall. Ow! he cried as he tumbled down. Plop! He landed in two soft things. At one end, there was a left paw. At the end of the other, a right paw. They were arms. Dragon arms. And, wonder of wonders, they were attached to a complete dragon. Not only was he complete, he was magic. Terry didn't realize it yet, but he had the good fortune to be caught by Puff the Magic Dragon. That is the end of chapter two. Please subscribe.